Yo, what's up everyone? How you all doing? Welcome to a new video. So I don't normally do these recap videos, um, but I want to do it this time. So basically, because I know that a lot of people out there can't make it to the Warriors Den. They don't have much time on their hands or for whatever other reason. I'm going to try and get this one hour and 27 down to just, you know, maybe like 10 minutes or something. I'm going to pretty much just go over everything that happened in the Warriors Den. So wasting absolutely no time getting straight into it. The hero skin for title update 2 which launches next Thursday is Ezio. So this is obviously a male version of the uh, Peacekeeper but he's going to have some uh, unique animations. You know it's not just like literally sticking the skin onto the female Peacekeeper. They've actually redone some animations for him. As you can see here we'll uh, see the running animation real quick. But you can see the difference so yeah, there you go. He does have obviously uh, brand new voice lines of, as well. They've not just taken uh, Ezio's voice lines from like another game or whatever. And he also has a unique drop attack, which as you can see, that's going to be an Assassin's Creed drop attack. And that's just going to be on him, unique to him. So me personally, I'm pretty happy about this because um, it opens the door for them to, you know, make hero skins for these characters that are currently uh, gender locked. So this, this opens the door for them to give us like a, for example, a female warlord or, you know, a male shaman, male Valkyrie, stuff like that. So it kind of fixes the whole gender lock issue. I'm not, I'm not sure if this is the route they're going to go down, but it is a good thing. Like personally, I think it's really good. Uh, so the the hero skins are normally 25k, but this one's just a little bit more. Obviously, a lot more. I think a lot more work went into this one with the unique animations, uh, the voice, the voice line, the unique drop attack. So for that reason, it's probably a little bit more, but it's not too much more. You know, it's like six, just over 6k difference. And you're getting a pretty, pretty fucking sick skin, in my opinion. I really like it. It's very clean. Uh, I don't really have any complaints about it, honestly. So obviously, Father Creed throwback event does come as well, and that looks like that's going to run for three weeks, April 25th to May the 16th. So you can earn exclusive rewards from playing this. You can all you can also get the rewards from the previous one that you may have missed. So that's good as well. We've also got uh, armor variations for the knights and the Vikings. So take a quick look at these. Uh, personally, I really liked the warden one. Uh, it was very nice. Um, big fan of the Lawbringer one as well. My, me personally, I think Lawbringer might be the winner of the Knights. As you can see right here, this is just fucking beautiful. But I just think these are so clean because, uh, don't forget, like, once your customizations on this, your color palettes, your materials, your patterns and everything, they just stand out so much. Like, these are just so clean in my opinion. All right, so let's take a quick look at the Vikings. I'm just going to run this on screen here for you, uh... Two times speed. So again, you know, this this material uh, really stands out with the materials, the color palettes. Well, the Varangian goes pretty hard as well, not going to lie. And then we've got the Old Man Warlord. We've got the Grand Marsh Armin and the Gilf uh, Valkyrie. <laughs> but yeah, these are overall pretty clean. Very happy with these. I have no complaints at all. I think the Lawbringer one goes hard. Just a shame that that character is kind of crappy right now unfortunately so obviously as well we've got cathedral that is going to be converted into a 4v4 dominion map so as you can see uh from the top view here on each side they, they was pretty much saying that each side is the exact same time um that it takes to get to the zone so there's no like advantage on defense or attackers so let's go and take a quick look at some of the zones over here so this is on a side over here, they've put, uh, they, they added a couple of geysers here to kind of like, you know, add just those few milliseconds extra for, for them to take to get there so that it makes it fur. So they've really put a lot of thought into this uh, about balance wise. So that's really nice. And you've got this path coming up here from the attacker side as well. The uh, In elimination, there's obviously a massive boulder here, um, but that's obviously been moved now as you go up to A side on the, on the left side though. All right, let's take a quick look at the middle of the map. So you've got a little uh, bridge as well, where you can get from the left side to the right side quickly and vice versa. So this is, uh, they also mentioned that this is the first 4v4 map where there's actually a roof above the minion lane. So you've got to rethink your your feet, for example, you know, like catapults, arrow storms, stuff like that. They're not going to work in the mid lane on this map. So kind of shakes things up a little bit with the feats in the mid lane, which is nice, you know, a nice little bit of fresh air, which is cool. But then here you've got the C point as well on the opposite side. Um, 
and it's pretty similar to you know like th that event that they did i can't remember what the event was so nice open space um i personally i like the way that this looks um i have no complaints about it at all you've got the ladders uh here that come up to the you know the bridge across to the other side of the map so quick rotations it's gonna be interesting to see how the uh com competitive players deal with the map and what their what their thoughts on it and but yeah as a casual player i'm pretty happy with what i see here i don't have any complaints it's you know it's been so long since we got a new map guys so you know we're in we're in year eight of the game <laughs> the fact that we're even getting a new map like even though it's not brand new even though it's a converted map um i think we should still be very happy and grateful about this still a lot of time and the work and resources and money and everything goes into this uh, and don't forget as well this is only one of two maps that we're getting this year we are actually getting a second converted map we don't know what that is yet we'll find out in you know probably one or two seasons but yeah this is looking really nice and i'm pretty happy with it let me know in the comments what you think so they've added a new eco mode to the game which uh, is pretty cool actually it's a, it's a really nice little feature so practically what it's going to do is going to save you a little bit of money on your energy bill so i'm going to quickly let him explain to you which each mode means uh this is going to be added into the options it's opt-in so it starts off uh, completely off and you can just choose uh, which version you want to use uh, there's three different versions minimal smart and full so if you turn on minimal, you're going to essentially save energy. Uh, it's going to go into a lower energy state on menus. If you turn it on to smart, it's going to start an energy saving mode if you're idle for two more minutes uh, or for two minutes. And if you put it on full, well, you're always going to be in an energy saving mode because it's going to disable certain enhanced graphics modes and settings and things like that. So how do you know if you have it on? Well, we put a new icon that's going to just appear only in the menus uh, just to show that you have it on. It's going look like a green icon it'll come up on the video in just a second in case you missed it and there it is yeah uh so yeah you can turn it on save some power uh just enjoy that or uh, just just don't worry about it either either way it's there for you as as a, as a happy earth day sort yep. of a uh, gift from for honor to all of our wonderful players out there so yeah so yeah that's a pretty cool nice little feature that they've added so moving on to more uh patch notes as well the highlander rework is finally dropping it has been so long um it's finally dropping so i'll let you read these yourself on screen they're pre pretty much going over the uh changes so you've got the offensive form changes here you've also got some more here as well some more changes so take a look at those you've also got some defensive form changes as well as you can see and also some nice little quality of life changes as well. You can Kabatos, no longer drain stamina. You can now feint the front dodge heavy attack instead of having to either go into offensive stance or Celtic curse to one of the sides. And the movement speed has been increased as well to match the Kensei. I think that's what he said. So nice changes there for the Highlander. Very excited for that rework and that's going to be dropping at title launch next Thursday. But yo, check this out, man. This is the one. This is what I'm fucking very happy about, man. New shoulder bash follow-ups. So... He's got new animations on the shoulder bash follow-ups on the left and right light attacks, which is the two lights, pretty much the bat bat, the heavy attack, all of the stances and the zone attack. And all of the new follow-ups have uninterruptible stance. So high parama, amazing. This is what he's needed. Uh, this is gonna help him a lot in team fights. But take a look at these new animations. These are so nice. There we go. So essentially what we've done is uh, on left and right uh, light attacks after shoulder bash and then on all the heavies and as well as on zone attack, we've given them all, and, and top light also does it, but the, all these attacks that I have listed are listed here have brand new animations. We took the opportunity there as well to make sure we did more half sorting stuff. I know it's a yeah. big, big request from the community to have half sorting attacks. I see yeah, Brian yeah, in the Brian's back, like, dancing in the background. Uh, going nuts, so that's great. <laughs> uh, so we've adjusted this, but at the same time, we wanted to keep Warden playing the same. So it's the same inputs. Everything's kind of the same. The damage is the same. Recoveries, timings, everything is the same. It's just different visuals because we wanted to make sure that because these have uninterruptible stance, um, they need to be different than the attacks from neutral because it's not always clear otherwise. Are you are you throwing your neutral one? Are you throwing, throwing the one after shoulder bash? Yeah. Did I miss time it and the wrong one came out and why didn't I get armor here and there? So mm -hmm. we, it's kind of like it's a whole package here for this. And the reason why we did this, which is also quite important, right, is Orton has a bit of an issue in group fights uh, yeah. where you couldn't really throw shoulder bash because you would get peeled 
constantly very very quickly so with this you actually are a lot more solid it's you're basically immune to like non-bash peels so it, it makes the hero much stronger in 1v1 it has literally no effect but that's okay it's really specifically for group fights so yeah i'm very happy about that obviously so some more changes here they are removing the backstep light openers from these following heroes it was a uh, so basically all of these heroes have like crushing counter lights so um if you didn't know what you was able to do pretty much just walk backwards and as soon as you saw your like a red indicator from your opponent you would backstep light to go for either a crushing counter and if it wasn't a light attack it was like a heavy for example then you'd be safe so this was a massive problem on afira especially um she was already very strong as it is this just made her a lot stronger but yes removing the backstep lights is a great thing he did, they did mention that they're going to be looking at removing backstep lights from other heroes, such as Shinobi, for example, because Shinobi can do the backstep light into the backflip and just, you know, avoid so much. So they're going to look into that, but for now, they've just got rid of the backstep lights for all heroes with crushing counters. So we've got some balance changes here as well for Shinobi, Hizkiri, and Afira, as you can read on the screen here. Mainly uh, damage nerfs, slight damage nerfs. Well, here's Elkira gets a uh, guide break vulnerability change here, which is much needed. We've also got some Orochi and Berserker nerfs as well, again, and slight damage nerfs. Uh, the Storm Rush, though, is 17 now down from 20, so that's quite quite a big nerf. I already got nerfed before, um, but the Berserker nerfs are all just, you know, very slight damage nerfs, but hey, any nerfs to Berserker damage is good in my books. And that is pretty much it, so, you know, I hope I didn't miss anything. I don't think I did. Let me know in the comments what you think. I think it was a pretty good Warriors Den overall. I'm pretty happy with it, especially the ward and stuff. Uh, but the new map's going to be exciting. I personally really like the, the hero skin. I know, I know probably some people won't. That's fine. But let me know in the comments what you think anyway. I hope you all have a great day and a great night. Love you all. I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.